increase in the Australian dollar. Yeah, a lot of people were talking about I, an end to the, the easing bias uh, after this. So. Uh, prior to this decision, Julia. So perhaps you could just tell us why we saw such a bounce if, if those were the expectations. Audio. We did see a really big bounce in the Aussie dollar and if we just have a look at the reaction in terms of the Australian dollar, this is what it looks like. We did see a very strong rise in the Aussie dollar and of course that has implications for the market as well. And one of the worst performing sectors on the market today is the healthcare space which is highly exposed to that uh, rising Aussie dollar and tends to be a negative uh, for that particular sector. Now we did see that two and a half level for the official interest rate, the cash rate being held and it's been at that level now since August 2013. The the easing bias also being removed. We also saw a reaction in terms of the Australian share market and this is quite interesting. Um, if we have a look at the Australian share market and if I just zoom in a little bit on 2.30 to the end of the market, you'll notice that at 2.30 we saw the market taking another leg down to the lows of the mm -hmm. session. So that actually saw the Australian share market uh, going to the lows of the session. But it wasn't just the Australian Central Bank which was in focus today. We were also watching comments coming through from Japan. Both Abe and Kuroda make making some comments after the US dollar to the Japanese yen fell below 101 yen. So making noises about some pr uh, proper uh, and appropriate exit strategies uh, and, and uh, that, uh, that saw the Japanese yen rising back above that 101 mark. So it was a very turbulent day for currencies as well as the market and of course the Australian share market some heavy losses today down by a massive 1.8 percent if we have a look at what happened across the market good you'll notice that it was a sea of red, not much green on screen. I think there was just one spot that saw a lot of green today and that, that was the gold miners. So a lot of volatility in markets. I think it's being driven by a number of things at the moment. First of all, the emerging markets volatility and the flows out of emerging markets that we've seen. And then the weaker manufacturing numbers that we've seen out of China. And then of course, the weaker manufacturing numbers that we've seen out of the US overnight as well. You think that push higher in gold can continue? I guess that's a big question. We have seen gold doing well in 2014. In fact, in January, we did see gold rising 3.2%. And it was actually the first monthly rise that we've seen in five months for gold. And of course, the gold, uh, the gold stocks being uh, leveraged to the gold price doing much better than that with the gold space up by 18% in the year to date. We've seen some phenomenal performance performances. Stocks like Perseus mining up more than 60% in 2014 so far. Uh, Troy Resources up by 49% and even Newcrest mining up by 30% in the year to date so far. We're only in the second month of the year. We've also seen some numbers coming out of the Perth Mint and we've actually seen physical demand quite good for the month of January as well, up by 10% month on month. That's been driven by a bit of uh, restocking in terms of inventory though and also we've got the newly minted 2014 our coins which is driving demand so at the moment the volatility that we are seeing in terms of currencies and in terms of the emerging markets good news for gold and if that continues we are expecting to see gold well supported one of the mining stocks that didn't do quite so well today we've got down at EDI down by about 1.2 percent Julia Lee over at Bell Direct what happened there today out of the engineering and construction uh, stocks to come out with their half year numbers. So it's February earnings season. We did see their half year profit up by around about 5% to coming in at $99 million. The revenue was actually down 17%. And if we have a look at their three major divisions, rail, we saw earnings down by 86%. Infrastructure, we saw earnings down by 15%. And mining, we saw uh, earnings down by 7%. So we are seeing their businesses coming under pressure. They have, however, kept their full year forecast and their four-year forecast is that they will see a flat year. So that's about $215 million worth of, uh, worth of profit. So it does look like they will be able to hit that based on what we've seen in the first half. And I think one of the big challenges for Downer EDI is replacing some of the revenue um, once some of these big projects come off. What we saw in the rail division is that the Waratah contract is almost complete now. And we're going to see uh, some of these massive LNG projects in Australia are coming to completion. They're, they are completion so they're going to have to replace revenue and I think that's going to be one of the key challenges for Downer EDI. Not a bad performance given the state of the market today the stock down 1.2 percent. Yeah let's look at the A group uh, Julia Lee and, and your thoughts on this one today. 
This is another company that's come out with some half-year numbers, and nothing really seems to be able to stop this company. Over the last few months, we've seen the CEO resign, the CFO resign, and yet the stock over the past 52 weeks is up a massive 100%. Now, if we have a look at REA Group stock today, up by 5%, so a fantastic performance on what's, what was a very difficult day on the market. We saw revenue up by another 30%. And, you know, over the last five years, we've actually seen revenue more than double for this company. A net profit was up by 37%. Over the last five years, we've seen um, earnings per share almost tripling for this company. So it's been a fantastic ride for REA Group. 2014 saw some major acquisitions as well. There was one form um, as well as another acquisition in Hong Kong and another acquisition um, over in Europe as well. So they are still acquiring, they are still growing, and it's great to see that they're also growing through some of the new media outlets. In, in terms of app visits, uh, we did see a 100 and 12% rise and in terms of mobile site visits we actually saw a 44% rise there so REA group was seeing a strong housing market here in Australia they're also exposed to Hong Kong as well as uh, Europe and they've been doing quite well so the stock doing really well today Julia Lee from Bell Direct Michael McCarthy from